Here is a square fit inside an equilateral triangle. What percentage of the triangle is shaded? Is it A, about half? B, I don't know, why don't you get a real job? C, sorry, no speak English. Or D, ah, what are you doing in my house? Who are you? If you just try to imagine it in your head, then you might think that the answer is one half because these two triangles are the same as these two triangles. And this triangle at the top is roughly the same as this triangle. So the area inside the square is is roughly equal to the area outside the square, so the answer is one half. But that's actually not correct, because there's a way to find the exact answer using nothing but basic algebra and Pythagoras' theorem. Pause the video now to try it out for yourself. So the first step is to split this triangle into two right angle triangles. <laughs> Next, I'm going to label the sides of the right angle triangle. I'm going to call this side A, and I'm going to call the longer side B, and then the hypotenuse. Because this is a right angle triangle, we've got A halfway along here, so the 2A is going to go all the way along, and so the side length of this equilateral triangle is going to be 2A, which is the same as this side here, so that's 2A. And I'm going to label the length of the sides of the square as L, and I'll write that in uh, red. And lastly, if this square has side length of L, then the half side is going to have a side length of half L. So I've copied this right angle triangle over onto an XY graph, and you'll see why in a second. This point on the graph marked by the green X is going to be 0A because the length of the green line is A. This point is going to be at L and a half L to get to the red X and this final point is going to be at B0. You can see clearly that this forms a straight line, and the graph for a straight line is simply y equals mx plus b. But since we've already used the letter b, I'm going to change it to y equals mx plus c. We want to find the values of M and C, and we can do it by using two points on the graph. And the easiest points to use are these end points here. So using this first point A, we've got Y equals A, M, we don't know yet, and X is equal to zero plus C. And then we can rearrange this because the zero cancels that out. We've got A equals to C, so C is simply just A. So we can change this to Y equals MX plus A. Now using this point, this time we've got y equals 0, m we still don't know, and x is equal to b plus a. So now we can rearrange this and find that m b is equal to a, sorry, minus a, because we minus both sides, minus a from both sides, and then m must equal to minus a over b. So the final equation we have is y equals minus a over b x plus a, but notice this right angle triangle, we've got all three of these sides. So we can actually use Pythagoras' theorem to calculate B in terms of A. And how we do that is we use A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So A squared plus B squared equals, now C is 2A. So we put that in brackets and then we square the whole thing. So we get 4A squared. Now we know that B squared, if we subtract A squared from both sides, is equal to 3A squared. And so we know that B must be equal to root 3A. So now we can replace this B with root 3A. And notice what happens. The A cancels from here. So we get Y equals minus 1 over root 3X plus A. Now notice that we've dealt with these two points, but we haven't dealt with the last point yet. So we've got to substitute in L and half L. So Y is a half L minus 1 over root 3 of X, which is L plus A. Now, this rearranges to minus 1 over root 3L plus A. We can add the minus 1 over root 3 over here. So we get 1 half L plus 1 over root 3L equals A. And then we can group this together, factoring out the L. So we get 1 over 2 plus 1 over root 3 of L equals A. Now, we want to find L in terms of A because if we can find L, then we can square it and get the area of the square. So to do that, we're first going to add together these two numbers. So a half add 1 over root 3. You make the denominators the same. You've got uh, 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 root 3 over 2 root 3 plus 2 over 2 root 3. Lots of L equals A. Now this makes 2 plus root 3 over 2 root 3 L equals A. Now we want to find L in terms of A, so we flip it round, turn it to the other way, so you get L equals 
2 root 3 over 2 plus root 3a. The last step is to find the area of the square, then find the area of the whole triangle, and then divide the square by the triangle. So to do that, the area of the square is literally just L times L, which is L squared. So L squared is equal to four lots of three over two plus root three all squared lots of A squared. And this changes to 12 over four plus three plus four root three lots of a squared, which is 12 over seven plus root four root three, lots of a squared. Now we want to find the area of the triangle. So remember that half of the way along is a, so two of the way along is gonna be two a, and that's gonna be the length of this bottom side. And remember that we already found out that B is equal to root 3A and B is the height of the triangle. So B is equal to root 3A. So to find the area of a triangle, you do base times height times a half. So that's a half times root 3A times 2A. So last but not least, the half cancels with the two. This gives us root 3A squared. Then we want to divide the area of the square by the area of the triangle. So we do L squared divided by root 3A squared. And that is going to give us 12 over root 3A squared, lots of 7 plus 4 root 3, lots of A squared. The A squareds cancel here. And so we end up with 12 over 7 root 3 plus 4 times root, yeah, 4 times 3 is 12 again. Then if we rationalize the denominator, and you should end up with 28 root 3 minus 48, which is 0 0.4974, which is around 49.74%. Boom, have that. What, we're gonna do, what, 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 what?